Welcome back guys, this is Jason, KM4ACK. Microsoft has invaded your Raspberry Pi, and today I'm going to show you how to get rid of it. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. Hey, I do want to give a shout out to Steve, WB3. LGC. He's the one that brought this to our attention over in the forum. So thanks, Steve, for uh, getting this out there. I was totally unaware before I read your post. So let me explain to you what's happening. And if you're not uh, interested in the explanation and you just want to see the steps on how to get rid of the Microsoft repository, I'll leave a notation right here on the screen so you can go ahead and fast forward to that point. But what's happened is there was a recent update uh, for the Raspberry Pi that installed a Microsoft repository, kind of um, slid it in there without any notification uh, to the open source community. Now, this uh, angered a lot of uh, people in the open source community more because of the way it was done than actually what was done and it was just that it was uh it, it was part of a routine update upgrade process and gave the user no notification that this was happening neither on the pi nor in the change logs that are published over on the raspberry pi foundation's uh website uh so that uh, was part of the problem and then the second part of it is this is more of an opt out instead of an opt in situation so it kind of takes control away from the end user uh, now why is this a bad thing well a the way they did it uh, just wasn't the right way to handle this the notice should have been given to the user and then they should have been allowed to make the choice do they want this extra repository or not but in addition to the repository there is also a Microsoft key that has been installed on the Raspberry Pi as well. Now that key can be used to verify that software is from a trusted source. Uh, so theoretically things could kind of happen in the background, uh, be verified that it's from a trusted source and run without your knowledge of it. Um, so it's just really not a good situation. Now, this may not matter to you, but it's these kind of techniques is one of the reasons that I left Microsoft several years ago. I'd rather be in control of what's going on on my Raspberry Pi, and I don't want things kind of slid in there that I'm just totally unaware of and not given an option to uh, look at, fix, uh, or at least be notified of in advance. Now, all of this could lead to um, more tracking of what you're doing. Uh, and a lot of people in today's society are trying to lessen their digital footprint and the amount of information they give to large corporations. Uh, so this, uh, every time you do an update or an upgrade in the future, you're going to be pinging a Microsoft server if you leave it as it is now. So just uh, kind of a little bit of the background on this, but let's go ahead and jump over to the Raspberry Pi and I'll show you guys how to stop this thing, at least for now. It may change in the future, but at least we can put a stop to it for now. Okay, so something to keep in mind here. You may not see exactly what I'm showing you if you haven't run an update upgrade process over the last uh, probably two weeks or so. You may not see this, but as soon as you run that update upgrade, you're going to see this information. So from the terminal, I'll tell you what, let me get back to my uh, home directory there. From the terminal, the first thing we want to do is run sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash hosts you're going to come down to the bottom of this file and you're going to put 0, .0, .0, .0 and we'll hit the tab key and we're going to put packages dot microsoft dot com 
And what that's going to do is anytime uh, anything tries to call packages.microsoft.com, it's going to redirect that back to our system and basically break the link to packages.microsoft.com. Uh, so you will see some errors when you do an update upgrade to where the system can't find uh, the Microsoft.com server. And that's uh, to be expected because we're redirecting that back to our local machine so that it can't make that connection. Once you've entered that line here, press Control S on your keyboard. You'll get the rote uh, whatever number of lines down there. And then Control X to escape out of it. Now, this next command uh, is okay for now. It could present some problems in the future uh, because we're going to hold back some updates from happening going forward. So this um, is, is kind of an optional step uh, that you may or may not want to take. The, what we did just a second ago pretty much, should, pretty much should take care of it since we're not allowing the Raspberry Pi to contact the Microsoft server, but you can run sudo space apt hyphen um, mark space hold space raspberry pi hyphen sys hyphen mods. I think I got all of that spelled correctly. And it'll tell you that that package is on hold. Now, at any point in the future, if you wanted to undo that one change, you could run this command again, the one we just ran. But instead of using hold, you could use unhold. U-N-H-O-L-D. Uh, and that would remove the hold that we just set on this package. So the next thing we need to do is we need to move over uh, to another directory. So we're going to use cd space etc space apt, or not space, but slash rather, slash trusted.gpg.d. And if we list out that command with the L, or list out that directory with the ls command, you'll see that we have this microsoft.gpg file. This is that Microsoft key that I told you about uh, in the intro portion of the video. So we're going to do a couple of things here. First, we're going to completely remove it with sudo space rm space dash v, oops, vf space and then we're going to give it that microsoft.gpg file name. If we run the ls command again, you'll see that we no longer have that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create now a dummy file that we can lock down so that this can't be reinstalled. So to do that, we're going to run sudo touch microsoft.gpg. We'll go ahead and hit return on that. Now let me clear that screen. And if we run it, you'll see that it looks like we have that file back. But if we do a cat command on that, you'll see that it is an empty file. So now that we've created this empty dummy file, we want to lock this thing down. We're going to do that by running sudo space C-H-A-T-T-R space plus I, and we're going to give it the file name again, Microsoft.gpg. We'll go ahead and press return again. Now, that has locked that file so that even the root user can't modify it unless they remove uh, this locked attribute. So uh, that takes care of that portion. Now, we need to back up one directory, so we're going to run cd space dot dot. That puts us back to our etc forward slash apt directory. And we're going to, let's see, let's just list that out real quick. We want to move into this file right here, or this directory right here, rather. So cd sources dot list dot d. And let's go ahead and press return there. Now, if we run the ls command here, you'll see that we have this vscode.list 
file. And we're going to go ahead and edit that file. So let's do sudo nano vscode.list. Once you get into this file, you're going to come to this line right here, and you're going to just comment that out by placing the pound sign or the number sign just ahead of that line. Once you've done it, you're going to press Control S and Control X. And that goes ahead and saves that information. Now, just like we did with the uh, key file, we're going to lock this file down so that uh, it, no changes can be made to it in the future. So we'll run sudo space C-H-A-T-T-R space plus I space V-S code dot list. And that takes care of it. This is pretty much the end. Now, if you don't want to go through all of these steps manually, and it's not that many, but if you don't want to do all of this manually, I did write a script that will take care of all of these changes for you. So I'm going to move back to the home directory, and we're going to take a look at how we can install the script that I wrote. So let's go ahead and open up the web browser, and we'll head over to my GitHub site. From the front page, you're going to click on the PyScripts uh, repository right here. If you don't see it on your front page, you can always click the Repositories tab right up at the top, and then click on PyScripts. But let's go ahead and open up uh, the PyScripts repository. Once you're on this page, we're going to scroll down until we find the script called Remove MS. You'll see that right here, Remove MS. Let's go ahead and click on that. Now, this next step is critical to make sure we get the right file. You have to click on the RAW button before you copy the link. So go ahead and click on that RAW button, and it'll bring you into a plain uh, text file here. Now we're going to copy that link right up at the top uh, in the address bar. So I'm going to press Control c on my keyboard to copy that, and I'll just minimize uh, the web browser. Now let's go ahead and move over to the downloads directory with cd space downloads. And then let's go ahead and download the script with wget. Uh, and then we're going to right click and paste in the link that we just copied. Go ahead and clear that screen, run the ls command, and you'll see that we have that uh, in this directory. So to run that, we're going to uh, just say bash space remove ms. And notice there that ms is capital. If you don't get that in there right, you're going to, uh, you're going to get a failure here. We'll go ahead and press return. Now, one thing that the script does is it gives you the option uh, of whether you want to place a hold on the Raspberry Pi SysMods package. Uh, so that is completely up to you whether you do that or not. Once you make your choice here, the script is just going to go ahead and take care of the changes that I showed you just a few minutes ago. And once it's done, it's going to let you know and I'll probably run into some errors here uh, because I've already done these changes manually. But I'll go ahead and hit uh, yes here for this, and we'll let it go ahead and run. Now, it does give you some information here that the hold will be placed. It also tells you how to undo that in the future. Uh, and as I expected, I did get some errors because it tells me the package was already on hold. And then, because we've already locked down that Microsoft key file, you'll see that we were unable to remove it. Uh, I was unable to uh, basically do anything else to that file. And then I get the same thing for the sources.list.d file, uh, because I had already locked those down manually. But if you hadn't locked them down manually, it would go ahead and take uh, care of each of these steps for you and then give you an all-finished uh, indicator down here as the last line. Guys, I hope this helps you get Microsoft kicked off of your Raspberry Pi. 
we'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.